EN After School. This is the Radio Entertainment Network. Inner Sanctum Mysteries. This is your host to welcome you again into the inner sanctum. Come on in. No, no, please don't stand on ceremony. We're all informal here. No ties, no collars. In some cases, no hair. <laughs> now, that doesn't mean we're complete boors, though. We study our Emily ghosts faithfully. You wouldn't catch one of us eating his teeth with a knife. Oh, no. We've been caught with knives before. Sewing, you might say, our wild throats. <laughs> well, the preliminaries are over beginning right now. Things are going to happen. So sit up, draw a deep breath, and lend us an ear. We've got to get our teeth into something. <laughs> Listen now to the voice of Donald Buker as Danny Williams as he tells the weird story of the dead walk at night. when I was a boy. My blind uncle tapping his cane and calling. Annie, where are you? He's dead. I wish I could join him. I tried to a thousand times, but they've always prevented me. Tapping. 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 It goes on incessantly. It never stops. Even when I sleep, I hear it every minute, every second. Something soft. I can thunder. Annie. Can't you stop it? Can't you give me one minute's peace? Why don't you stop it, you blind old fool? Annie. Leave me alone. Haven't you got enough? Leave me alone. He tapped that way with his cane. On the night, I decided to kill him. We were in his room in the big house where we lived together. I had been living with him since I was 14 years old. For 10 years, I'd been his companion. His nurse, his servant, his slave. On the night, I was going to kill him. I slipped a length of strong cord into my dinner jacket. He was totally blind. Had been for 30 years. Yet, strangely enough, he could see. He could see with his uncanny, highly developed sense of hearing. And with that cane of his, that cane that was everlastingly tapping. The wind is blowing up tonight. It'll be getting cold soon. Yes. And then, all the servants gone. This is the night off. You going out again tonight? Yes. With Martha? Yes, with Martha. Hmm. Can you pour me some brandy? Yes, Morgan. I poured out the drink. In my pocket, I felt the cord, and as I handed the drink to him, I took it out and walked behind him. Now, this was the time. Lift the cord around his neck. Twist it. It would be over soon. He sat there, holding the glass in one hand. I raised the cord over his head. All I had to do was drop it over his neck. Why are you standing behind me? What? Well, how did you know? I heard you walk there. 
Why, Danny? I just wanted to look out of the window. One quick move, it would be over. But I didn't want to kill him, so I... I suddenly... I'd make a clean breast of it and give him a chance. Well, Dan, how long are you going to stand there? Morgan, there's something I want to speak to you about. Well, what is it, my boy? I want to marry Martha. I, uh... I thought that was on your mind. But I need $10,000, Morgan. Will you give it to me? <laughs> what, what are you laughing at? You. I was just waiting to see how much you'd ask for. You lied your way in pretty deeply this time, didn't you, Danny? What are you talking about? I saw what was coming. I, uh... While you were in town... We had a very interesting little talk. Did you? Mm hmm. She told me that her father's worried about her marrying a fortune hunter. Seems he's a very wealthy man. Yes, that's right. And it seems that he won't give Martha any money when she marries unless her husband is a man of some means himself. It also seems that you lied to her. You told her you're wealthy. Why? Did you tell her the truth? No. You always were an incorrigible liar. Well, Morgan, she got the impression that I had some money because I lived in this house. And now you have to live up to that impression so you can marry her. But you'll give me the money, won't you? Why'd you lie to her? Well, I did it without thinking. I, I wanted to tell her the truth, but I couldn't. I was afraid that if she found out that I'd lied, she'd hate me. Morgan, are you going to give me the money? Danny, I'm very fond of you. I took you in to live with me when you were a poor, penniless gutter snipe. I educated and taught you to live like a gentleman. I even named you sole beneficiary of my estate. But that's why I'm asking you for the money now. If you're going to leave me all of it, why don't you give me a little of it now? Because I don't want you to marry Martha. Why not? I don't think she's the girl for you. You stupid, blind old fool. Dan. Martha's the finest girl I ever met. I, I won't have you talking about her like this. You won't have a penny of my money to marry her. You're doing this because you want me to stay with you. Now, what are you talking about? From the very first day I came here, it's been Danny, do this. Danny, do that. Danny, read to me. Danny, pour me some brandy. You've made me a servant as a slave. How can you talk this way after all I've done for you? Done for me? Did you ever teach me to work? Did you ever teach me to do anything except live in luxury when I didn't have a penny to my name? You made me someone who's of no earthly good to anything or anyone except you. Well, what are you going to do about it? Leave? No. I'm not going to leave, Morgan. You are. What do you mean? I'm going to kill you. Don't be ridiculous, my boy. You'd probably make a bungling mess of it. I don't think so. You see, I planned it very carefully. Uh, Danny, if you think you can frighten me into giving you that money, you're quite mistaken. I don't intend to frighten you. I intend to murder you. You... You're not serious. Yes, I am, Morgan. Danny, you... You got up, I heard you. Yes. Now, don't lose your head. Perhaps we can come to some agreement. It's too late for that. Don't think you can stall me and then turn me over to the police. Danny, where are you? You'll know in a minute, Morgan. When you feel something on your neck. Oh! oh. No. Let go of me. It'll be over in a minute. Let go of me, you idiot. Let go. Not now, Morgan. All right, all right, Danny. I I'll admit it. I wanted you to stay with me. I'm I'm blind, old, alone, but but I'll let you go. I'll give you the money you want, and only don't kill me. It's too late now. I know oh. you, and I don't trust your promises. I'll give you anything you want. You hear anything? Now, please, Dad. No, Morgan. Oh, if I could only see. If I could only see. <laughs> I'm going to be merciful, Morgan. It'll only take a few seconds, and this sword will crush the life out of you. Morgan. 
Hogan. Hogan. He's dead. I heard the front door open and close. I had told Mark that he'd come at nine o'clock. I ran out of the room and looked down the long stairway. Hello, darling. Mother. Shall I come up? No, no. Wait there. I'll come right down. All right. I rushed back into the room. My uncle was lying on the floor. The rope twisted about his neck. His face streaked with purple. I picked up the cane and began tapping on the floor. Then I placed the cane near to him. I went back to the door again and called. Good night, Morgan. Your uncle. Oh, he's fine. I heard him tapping around up there. Yes, he likes to make a lot of noise with that cane of his. I think he gets a kick out of it. Do you think it's safe to leave him alone here? Safe? Well, of course. Uh, Look, shall we go dancing somewhere? Mm Mm-hmm. That's a swell idea. Well, friends, do you think Uncle Morgan will stay dead? Oh, you do? Well, that shows how much you know. On this program, the dead never stay that way. So get ready for the worst, because in the next few minutes, you're going to find corpses that walk in the dead of the night. Oh, yes. They do, all right. They do. Don't you worry. (laughs) All right. Let's listen now to Donald Duke as Danny as he finishes his story. It's easy to lie to the police. When Martha told them that she heard my uncle tapping in his room, I was cleared of all suspicion. I suggested that the murder was committed by some thief who broke into the house to rob it after we had left. The police agreed. I received the inheritance. And Martha and I planned to go to California to be married. I had lied my way out and fooled everyone. Everyone. Myself. I knew what I'd done. I couldn't forget it. I became nervous and morose. And then came that last night before Martha and I were to go away. I was alone in the house, preparing to close it. Hello, Dan. Oh, Martha. But it's so late, I didn't expect you. I know, darling, but I was afraid to leave you alone in this huge old house. I decided to come over. Well, that's very sweet of you, darling, but there's nothing to worry about. You can't fool me. I've noticed how you were behaving these last few days. Have you? Ever since your poor uncle was killed, you haven't been quite yourself. Well, I suppose I have been a little upset. I'm glad you came, darling. Look, I can put you in the guest room next to my uncle's old room. That's the only one beside my own that hasn't been dismantled yet. Come on. I'll show you the way. All right. When we get to California and we're married, you'll forget all this. I hope so. What was that? I didn't hear anything. I... I thought I heard a noise. I was right. This old house is affecting you. Maybe. Maybe. You know, Martha, last night I... I thought I heard him tapping with his cane. Did you? Well, it was just my imagination, I guess. I wonder. You know, darling, I had a rather strange dream about him. You did? I... I dreamed he came to me and told me he wasn't dead. Well, that's a crazy idea. Isn't it? But just suppose he wasn't dead. Well, that's impossible. I saw him dead with a rope around his neck. Did you? That's funny. I went with you to the morgue and I didn't see the rope. The police had removed it. Oh, yes. Yes, of course they had. That I... Well, well, I saw those welts. It didn't take much imagination to see the rope. Oh, my poor Danny. I'm afraid this has affected you more than you realize. Uh, here's your room, Martha. Danny, you, you've been kind of cold and, and distant lately. You do love me, don't you, darling? Of course, Martha. Hey. Good night, Dan. Good night. I was awakened that night from a tortured sleep by a familiar sound. The sound of my uncle's cane. 
tapping on the floor above me. At first I thought I was dreaming. But then I heard it again. It seemed to be coming closer. It seemed to be taking a familiar chord. Yes. I had heard it a thousand times when he was alive. That same nervous, rhythmic tapping. It was coming down the stairs. Now, would it go down further or would it turn as it had done so often to my room? It came closer. Closer. It was coming to my room. There could be no doubt about that. It couldn't be alive and yet... It was knocking at the door. It took every bit of courage I had, but I went to the door and opened it. There on the floor outside my door was my uncle's cane. A throb of cold, icy terror shook me. I ran back into the room and half insane with panic, I shouted, Martha! 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 Danny, what's the matter? Martha, Martha, darling. I... I... I must be going out of my mind. I saw... What did you see? That cane. That cane that you have in your hand. Put it down. I found it outside your door. I thought you'd misplaced it. No. No, that's my uncle's cane. That's the one he always used. Oh, but, Danny, there's no need to be so frightened of it. <laughs> Why, you said it was going to hurt you the way you asked. Martha! Here, you hold it. No. Danny, you're terrified. What's wrong? What's happened? Martha, Martha, don't make me tell you. Don't. But what are you afraid of? That cane. Put it down. Throw it away. The cane? Throw it away. You don't know what you're saying. Oh, Martha. Why do you keep pointing it at me? Why? Danny, you've got to tell me what's troubling you. I won't put it down until you tell me why you're afraid. Martha, for heaven's sake. You can trust me, Danny. I love you. Tell me what it is. Martha. What is it? No matter what it is, I'll always love you. Don't be afraid to tell me. I killed him. Your uncle? Yes. Why? For the inheritance. I, I didn't want you to know that I didn't have a cent. I asked him for the money, begged him for it. He sat there in his chair telling me I couldn't have a cent. He wanted to keep me here with him. I wanted to marry you. That's why I murdered him, Martha, because I love you. Do you understand? Yes. Oh, Martha. Martha, I knew you would. You'll stand by me, won't you? Why are you smiling that way? How much money did you inherit? $200,000 in this house. You'll transfer that money to me in the morning. When the house is sold, you'll turn over that money to me, too. If you don't, I'll tell the police what you just told me. Martha, I... I don't understand. I thought I was pretty clear. Oh, I... I, I see now. You, you, you think I'm too upset to manage the estate and you want to take care of it for me until we're married. There isn't going to be any marriage. No marriage? No. Now that I can get the money without marrying you, there's no reason for me to tie myself down. Why should you want the money? Your father's... He's been dead for 17 years. Martha, you took... You were lying to me. Yes, sir. But you were lying to me, so it comes out even. You stopped cowering at this cane. There's nothing queer about it. I made that tapping noise tonight. I thought it would make you confess, and it did. <laughs> this is a joke. <laughs> It's a monstrous joke. <laughs> I wouldn't think it was so funny if I were in your position. You know, the money isn't quite all. I can use you, Danny. I might need certain things done sometimes. And if you'll remember that I can send you to the electric chair whenever I choose to, you'll do them. I see. The slave merely changes masters. Where are you going? Back to my room. Oh, no, you're not. Then, let's go over I want to show you something, Martha. Something about this cane. You said there was nothing queer about it. Well, there is. Let me show you. You didn't know, did you, that if you press a button in the handle, the outer covering slips off and you have a sword in your hand. A sword? Yes. Look. Yes. See? It's a sharp sword forged in Italy during the Renaissance to be used by men with less conscience than I about murder. Dan, what are you going to do? I think you know. No, Dan, you can't. Did you think I would give you that money after I murdered a man to get it? I'll let you keep the money. You think I believe you? I know, liar. I won't tell the police. I swear I won't. I'll do anything you say. I'll marry you. Do you think I'd marry you after I found out that your love was a lie? Do you think I'd let you live when I know you have a secret that can enslave me? No, Dan, take that sword away. Don't do it. I, I love you. Liar. Dan, don't. Please, I, 
I think you are. I'll do anything, anything you say. that I first began hearing in my mind. That tapping, 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 that incessant tapping in the cave. When the police came, I told them everything. They asked only one question. When did you hear this tapping in your mind? After I killed him. Hmm. Well, you'll be all right after a good doctor treats you. Perhaps. Meanwhile, we'll do everything we can to find the person who killed your uncle and your sweetheart. I think it's the same man. He's probably some thief who thought he'd try a second time. But I just told you I'm the person you want. Now, Danny, you don't think I believe that story for a minute, do you? You, you don't believe it? After the way I saw you cry when your uncle died. And you can't make me believe that sweet girl did the things you said. I know something about human nature, my boy. No, Danny, the shock of finding your sweetheart murdered so soon after your uncle's murder was too much for you. This whole confession was a lie. For 20 years now, I've been in this cell at the state asylum waiting to die. I, who told the truth, because I wanted to die. For 20 years, I've been hearing that tapping day and night every second. For 20 years, I've been hearing my blind uncle call me as he used to when I was born. Dan. Dan, where are you? Why don't you come to me? Dan, where are you? This isn't Danny, this is your home. Our story's over and the porters are now mopping up. Well, I guess tonight's little story should teach you never to tell a lie. Lying leads to cheating and cheating leads to murder. And murder leads to insanity, all of which are very bad habits to get into indeed. <laughs> Friends, it's time once again to close that creaking door. Until next week at the same time when we'll be back with a little hunk of horror. <laughs> You'll be sure to listen, aren't you? Until next week, then. Good night. Pleasant dreams. United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.